Hi everyone, welcome back to Faith and Flower. I'm Robin. Today I'm going to do a little check-in of our prepper pantry and show you how I am managing our three-month food supply. Starting with our grocery haul, then how I prep our produce and meat, put it all away, and how I store it to keep it all rotating so that everything stays fresh. I just picked up our curbside order from HEB, which is one of our local grocery stores here in Texas and the one where I probably do the bulk of our shopping. And so I picked up quite a few things to restock our prepper pantry or extended pantry. So I will show you those things in a minute, but first I'll start with the cold things. And so this is the milk that I like to buy. My guys really like whole milk and I like getting the ultra pasteurized organic that HEB offers. So this is generally a pretty good price, but it is also good for a long time, usually at least a month or so out, which makes it really nice. Um, sometimes we go through milk really quickly and other times not so much. So either way, if it's unopened, it lasts quite a long time. And then these are the eggs that we like to get. And these are rather pricey, but they are such good quality eggs, rich yolks, all of that. So those are what we get generally. And then I picked up some cottage cheese for a recipe that I'm going to be making. And again, I just got the HEB brand. The organic is just too pricey, <laughs> so I just stick with that. And then for fruit, I got some organic bananas. And I'm always a little hesitant with produce and things like that for the curbside order. I never know if the shopper is going to pick things the way I would. Um, these bananas look great and usually bananas are pretty safe. Also the strawberries are in season right now so I figured that was a safe bet as well. And for meat this week, I'm restocking our freezer a little bit. Their chicken was a pretty good price this week and I like to get this um, natural one that they have at HEB. And what I do is just divide it up into smaller packets. I use my uh, vacuum sealer and then I put those in the freezer. So I'm going to do that today before I put these away. And I got the chicken breast and also some of the chicken thighs. I really like using both of these. I have lots of recipes and these are also the sort of thing that I can throw together at the last minute. So I was happy to be able to restock those. And some of the other produce that I picked up, which I also felt could be a pretty safe bet when someone else is picking out your produce, is a head of green cabbage. We love to make coleslaw, so this is great for that. Also, I can use it in soups and things in the winter time, but in the summer, wonderful for coleslaw. And one of these English cucumbers or seedless cucumbers, I think they're also called like hothouse cucumbers, whatever you call them. This looks like a really nice one. And we make cucumber salad. It's also great in regular salads. My family is a big fan of cucumbers. I also got a bunch of asparagus, but here I think we went a little bit wrong. <laughs> they don't look quite like what I would have chosen. I probably would have passed on these if it were me in the store. They just don't, they look a little bit sort of shriveled and the ends don't look great, but I will use these quickly and um, I'm sure they'll still be okay. Also, I got some organic romaine hearts. This is probably our favorite lettuce for salads, so that is something that I keep on hand at all times. And then for onions, I got a bag of these Texas um, sweet onions. They're yellow onions, and I actually like the size of these. They're not too big, so they're really good in a lot of recipes, and I don't wind up with more than I really need. I got a few more jars of this Better Than Bouillon roasted chicken base. This is what I really love using to make chicken stock when I'm adding it to soups and recipes. This is shelf stable for quite a long time. You can see the expiration date is 2023. So I can keep these in our pantry for a long time and I just need to add water to it. It just gives a really delicious flavor. It's seasoned a little bit more than just your standard chicken broth or chicken stock. So it makes it really yummy. And I went ahead and got three of those because I've used, I've using up everything I have in there currently. And then I got four of these wild caught clams in a can. 
Patrick was asking for this recently. He always loves um, clam sauce with pasta, and that is such an easy thing to throw together on a busy weeknight. So it's great to have those on hand, and I haven't had them for a while. So glad to add those to our pantry. And I picked up some golden raisins because I wanna make some muffins this week. They're sort of like carrot cake muffins that are very healthy and delicious, but the golden raisins are really good in that. So I got some of those. Our bakery at HEB makes some really delicious things, including these flour tortillas. And these are Patrick's favorite. He loves flour tortillas whenever we have um, tacos or burritos or something like that, or they're great for wraps and just you know, quesadillas, anything that you can think of for tortillas, he prefers the flour. And then Peyton and I actually prefer the corn and these are gluten-free, so that's great for Peyton. And they had a special this week, so I went ahead and got two. If they're normally about $2 a packet, but this week you could get two each for $1.50. So that was a good deal. And so I got some to use now and some to put in the freezer for later. They freeze really well. And they also now have this resealable package, which makes it really convenient as well. And then for cereal, my strategy is always to get the cereal that we like, but that's on sale and then buy a couple of them. And so they had a deal where if you got um, two, you got, I think, a dollar off a piece, which was really good. And so this is one that Patrick and I both like, the Special K Red Berries, and this one I think is new. Cinnamon and pecan are at least new to us. So I grabbed two of those to keep on hand in the pantry. And that's how I save a lot of money by buying things when they're on sale, stocking up a little bit, and then we have those things on hand and I've gotten them at a great price. So then we don't run out and have to buy whatever the current price is, I will have the sale price. And over time that really does save money. And so one of the things that I realized I needed to restock on were snacks. So that's why there's so much in this order. And so we're not gonna be eating these right away. They will be kept on hand for a while. Um, but I picked up some Fig Newtons because they had a deal with Nabisco where if you bought five Nabisco products, you would get a dollar off each. So that's $5 off. So I took advantage of that and got these Fig Newtons. I used to love these as a kid and I have not had them in the longest time. So I thought that would be a fun, really fun treat. Not sure if Patrick even really likes this, we'll see, but I love them. And then also got these Digestive Biscuits. This is the HEB brand. They were quite a bit cheaper than whatever that brand is that everybody knows that makes those. These are so good with tea and they keep quite a long time. They're a great snack. Also, shortbread cookies. They have a really good long shelf life and they're a nice treat. So I thought that would be nice to have on hand. I think they were a special deal this week too. Along with that Nabisco deal, I got some Ritz crackers because we love those. Always like having them on hand. And lately I've been getting this um, family size stacks because they're a little bit smaller. So when I have them, um, we don't open them up and then you know have some laying around for a while. We usually finish one sleeve at a time that way. I also have never tried these before, but I love biscotti. And this was part of a deal with another product. I think if I bought, I think it was this, these Belveda um, little biscuits, breakfast biscuits, they're like cookies, then this was free. So we're gonna try those biscotti. I got these. I don't think I've tried the cranberry orange flavor. I've tried their blueberry ones before and they're really good. So these are a nice little snack or something nice to have with tea as well. And also these Nature Valley biscuits were a good price this week. There was some kind of coupon for those. And I think they're a similar product to this. So we're gonna give those a try and they're in blueberry. And along with the Nabisco deal, I got some vanilla wafers and also graham crackers. And these things are all not gluten-free, but I got quite a few gluten-free things as well, and I will show you those in a minute. And I was talking about the bakery at HEB. They make such good tortilla chips as well. These are just their sea salt ones, and they are just like fresh baked tortilla chips that you find at a restaurant. So we love those, and we'll need to eat those pretty quickly because they're fresh now. And then for gluten-free items, I found some good deals this week as well. So I got the um, vanilla wafers. I can never pronounce this brand. Kenny Kinnick, I think it is. <laughs> but these are really good, one of Peyton's favorites. He also really loves these Vans gluten-free cheese crackers. And so they're kind of like um, 
you know, the cheese it crackers or something like that. But I think they have a couple more, um, you know, better ingredients in there. They've got oats, the brown rice, millet, quinoa, and amaranth. Amaranth. I can never say that either. Um, but a little bit healthier, and he really likes those. And also wanted to get him some little sort of snack bar or breakfast bar type things. These are great for when we travel and, and just to carry along if we're hiking or something. So these are the strawberry glutino oven bake bars. And this is something similar that he has not tried before, but I thought he might like, so I bought these. These are the Vans Gluten-Free PB&J Blueberry. And they're a similar thing, like a little breakfast snack bar thing. Also this same idea and maybe a little bit more like a fig newton but they're raspberry and peyton has never tried these before but i thought he might like to he could take them along for lunches as well so got that and then this is one of his favorites these are the gluten-free shortbread cookies by char so this is all of the snacks that i have stocked up on a lot of them are good for quite a long time, so they will stay in our pantry and we will just use them, you know, little by little. And that way I've got all of the snacks sort of restocked in our prepper pantry. And one thing that I sort of skipped over because it's kind of an odd thing, I guess, to buy at the grocery store, but hydrogen peroxide. And this was one of those items that really disappeared fast at the beginning of the pandemic. I had some on hand, but I went through it quickly. I forgot how many things I use hydrogen peroxide for. It's just one of those things that you always need to have you know, sort of stashed away in your home. So now I make sure that when I'm getting low on it, I restock it. And so that is going to be kept in our bathroom. And it's sort of, you know, for medicinal purposes and for cleaning and things like that. So this is everything that I got at the store today. And of course I will be supplementing more with produce and things like that, but I'll probably go in the store myself to pick out my produce as we talked about some things are just better when you choose them yourself. <laughs> but for all of the shelf stable products, it's so easy to shop with the curbside. I can just go online, pick out everything that I need. I don't have to run around in the store. And then today is a rainy day, so it was really nice to be able to pull up and just let them load up the car for me. So now I'm gonna put all of these things away and I will talk to you guys a little bit more in the prepper pantry about how I'm managing to kind of keep everything rotating in there so that we keep things fresh and we use what we store. Whenever I can, I like to go ahead and prepare as much of our produce as I can when I get home from the grocery store. Right now, I'm washing some strawberries and I'm just putting a little bit of white vinegar in the bottom of my salad spinner. I will add water and the strawberries and allow the strawberries to soak for about five minutes. And so when I go ahead and prep our produce, it's much more likely to be eaten, <laughs> but it's also just easier for me throughout the week to have as many of those things sort of ready to go. And so when I have the time, I take the time to do this. From what I understand, soaking strawberries in a little bit of vinegar and water like this helps to remove pesticides and insects and, and loosen up any other dirt that might be clinging to them. And it also helps them last longer in the refrigerator. To remove the tops, I'm using this little tool that I got from Pampered Chef quite a few years back. And generally I don't like tools that just have one purpose, but this works so well at removing the tops without taking too much of the strawberry along with it. But you could use a knife. A special tool is definitely not necessary. And as far as making the strawberries last a long time, I've also heard that it's best to keep them out of the refrigerator because they can lose their flavor. But in our house, strawberries just don't last long anyway because we eat them really quickly. Our shopper today really did a good job with these. They look amazing and they taste great too. I just love strawberry season. 
I also like to prepare some of the romaine lettuce, so all I have to do during the week is grab it out of the refrigerator to throw together a quick salad. So I will chop up the romaine, I add it to my salad spinner, just give it a good wash and a good rinse, spin out as much of the water as I can, and then I store it in a container that's lined with a paper towel, and lettuce is ready to go and ready to be put together in a salad on a busy weeknight. Once the produce has been washed, prepped, and put away, I start preparing the meat that I want to add to our freezer. And so I get out my plastic cutting board. I always use that instead of the wooden one underneath to avoid cross-contamination. I like that this one has this well that captures all of the juices so they don't spill out onto the counter or my other cutting board. I got this one from Pampered Chef several years back, and I don't know if they're still available, but I'm sure you can find one like it on Amazon. On. I also love that I can just put that right in my dishwasher and I don't have to worry about washing it in the sink. In general, I find that it's more economical to buy a large package of chicken like this, but I don't use this much chicken at one time. We don't have a big family. So I like to take it out of the package and sort of repackage it using my vacuum sealer. But before I even do that, I want to cut these down a little bit. I'm going to make sort of chicken cutlets out of them because these are very thick and I find that it also helps to stretch out our meat a little bit. It helps us consume a little bit less less meat, and that's economical as well. Once I have the chicken all sliced up, I'll put about two to three pieces in individual vacuum bags, seal those up, and then mark them with the date that I bought them. That way I can know what I need to use first in our freezer and keep everything rotating. Once the perishable items have been dealt with and put away, I start putting away all of the shelf stable items into our pantry. And so I group them together in these bins and I have a whole video on how I organized our pantry. So if you're interested in seeing that, I'll put it in the cards above and also in the description box. 
This one is where I keep some of our pasta sauces along with all of the bouillons and stocks. So I'm going to add the Better Than Bouillon into this one. And I love having our items grouped together in these bins. They really streamline the look of your pantry and I was amazed at how many things I can group together in them. And this one in the corner is where I like to keep our sort of canned meat. So I've got another can of chicken breast in here. This is where I keep the tuna. And there's a lot of back stock of these items on the top shelf and I'll show you that in just a little bit but this is where it makes sense to add the clams and because I have a little extra space in this bin I also have some cooking oils that are back stock in there as well and this is one of our little snack bins I group together any dried fruits and usually granola bars into this one so that's where the raisins will go these larger bins are perfect for housing all of our snacks and so I keep one for all the gluten-free items and the other for everything else I also will grab this bin because this is where I keep all of our onions, garlic, and shallots, so I'll unload those. And when I pulled the basket out, I discovered a little piece of trash because I guess it makes sense to toss it back there. It's much easier than putting it in the trash can. The way to ensure that everything stays as fresh as possible in your extended pantry is to keep all items rotating. So even with the onions, I will make sure that I put the freshest ones on the bottom and the older ones on top. And I am sure to use the older ones first so that everything stays as fresh as possible and I don't waste anything or let anything go to waste. I keep our potatoes in the same type of basket, but on the other side of our can racks so that the potatoes and the onions are safely separated. You guys actually clued me into that and that ensures that everything stays fresh as well because storing the onions and the potatoes too close to each other can cause the potatoes to sprout early. And since I've been doing this, I've noticed that they do stay fresher longer. Next, I arrange everything in their appropriate baskets. So this is our snack basket. And again, I try to put the things that need to be eaten first closer to the front. And also a good idea would be to label the boxes with the expiration date so everybody can see quickly what needs to be eaten first. But these have a pretty good long shelf life and we do go through them in a timely manner. So usually I don't really need to label them, but I'm also really surprised how much these bins hold and they really make everything look neat in the pantry they're easy for my family to access because they can easily grab the bin and so I like the system very much things we use on a daily basis are on the shelves that are easily accessible and then on the top shelf is where I store a lot of our back stock items so I have cereal and containers down where we can get them every day and then the ones that we are storing for later I keep up on the top shelf just below this I keep a little section of gluten-free items for Peyton so I'm putting some extra cereal there some of the back stock items that I keep on the top shelf are coffee canned chicken there's a whole another case under there that you can't see we keep extra rice up here I actually have quite a lot on the shelf below we've got rolled oats that are gluten-free some extra cereal a big box of tea for making iced tea in the summertime some juice all of the protein powders that we use in our smoothies 
the cereals we store up here, plus all of the canned and jarred foods that will last for a long time, I keep up here on the shelf. And then as we go through all of our stock on the shelves below, I replenish them from up here and I am always sure to keep everything in rotation. And I used to label all of the cans with the dates on tops, just so I would keep track of, you know, not letting anything go past the expiration date. But now that I've sort of got our system in place, we're rotating through everything on a regular basis and I don't even really have to worry about that anymore. We're definitely getting through before anything would come close to expiring. And then I have this big basket where I keep some extra brown rice. I've got lentils in here. Um, some extra nuts, extra sugars, and I also have quite a few bags of flour that I've prepared for more long-term storage by freezing the flour to make sure that I kill any larvae from insects that could be in there. And then I also vacuum seal them so they stay really fresh for a long time. And I keep all of that in this bin, which holds a surprising amount. And this will keep us well stocked with all of these staple items for a very long time. This rack for our canned goods makes it really easy for me to keep things in rotation because I'll always put the newest cans in the back and the oldest ones in the front. And as I need to, I will replenish from the shelves above. And as I was talking about before, I used to always write the dates on the top of the cans. And this is a really good idea until you get your system down really well, just to be sure that you know what your older items are and what you need to be using so that you don't let any food go to waste. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. I hope that it helped you get an idea of how our family rotates through the food that we keep on hand for our three month food supply. If you're interested in some of the recipes that I use to make sure that we are using what we have in our pantry, I will have a couple of videos linked down in the description box. Thanks always for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. I look forward to seeing you in the comments and the next video. Until then, have a wonderful week.